The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you're encouraged to post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not. No retribution. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. Well, today is Good Friday around the world, except in New Zealand and Australia, where it's Good Saturday. (laughs) And uh, Jews around the world are celebrating Passover, and Christians around the world are getting prepared to celebrate Easter on Sunday. But then reality hits us square between the eyes, at least for those of us here in the United States, because that dreaded day... April 15th is just five days away. That's right, the day when your income taxes are due. And how many of you fill out the short form because you feel that if you fill out the short form, there's no way Uncle Whiskers is going to come knock on your door and demand an audit of your stuff? Well, guess what? According to our guest today, and you know there are a lot of people here who are upset that the fat cats are getting uh, bailout money. They want economic stimulus money. How much economic stimulus money would you like? Would you like $2,000 extra cash money in your pocket every year? Well, according to uh, Ronnie Deutsch, the tax lady, author of the new book, The Tax Lady's Guide to Beating the IRS and Saving Big Bucks on Your Taxes, uh, if you're not uh, careful about the way you file your income taxes, you're giving Uncle Sam $2,000 more a year on the average than he is entitled to. That's $2,000 that you could put into your pocket every year. Unbelievable. Ronnie Deutsch, welcome to News Talk Online on PalTalk.com. Yeah, Gary, I love that introduction. I believe you have got everybody's attention when you just say the words April 15th, IRS people perk up and they either feel great relief or great pain well you know i was hoping that the show would be sponsored by melanta today because i gotta tell you (laughs) my stomach uh, goes in knots when it gets close to uh, income tax filing time my my cpa sent me the uh, forms back that he filled out i haven't even opened up the package because he didn't tell me this time that i've got money coming back and if it means i owe him money him being uncle whiskers I'm not going to be very happy, although I guess they tell you and, uh, that uh, it's a misnomer to think that you want money back because you're giving the government interest-free money if you got money coming yeah, back. Yeah, I want to definitely just let pound away on the refund check addiction that I have seen over the past 18 years only get worse. Right now we're talking 70% of all Americans give Uncle Whiskers an interest free loan. So they get their refund check in April, and hey, congratulations, Gary, that you're not paying and you're actually getting money back. But I'm stepping back and saying to the 70% of the people out there, let's stop giving Uncle Whiskers an interest-free loan. Let's make a minor adjustment to our withholdings, and let's start getting that money right now when we need it. It's ridiculous. We, we, we're just putting money out there, and we don't overpay the dentist. We don't overpay the mechanic, Gary, but for some reason we're very generous with the IRS. Well, the reason we're very generous, you say it yourself, the tax code is written in a way as to confuse everybody who reads it, including if you call the IRS hotline and ask them two times, two different individuals, the same exact question, you're going to get two different answers. People are scared to death that you're going to get a knock on the door and some uh, uh, some guy dressed in black is going to come in and demand to see all of your uh, proofs. Uh, you're going to go through an audit, and who wants to go through that? Well, let's talk about the great gig that the IRS has. As long as we t- keep the tax code confusing, 
convoluted. We're going to make sure that you're scared, you're intimidated, and unfortunately you're going to fill out the short form, do the tax dance only one day a year, rather than change the way you approach taxes. That's what I'm saying in this book. You have options as taxpayers, but you got to learn a little bit about it so that if Mr. Whiskers knocks on the door, you're going to know how to beat him. That's the whole premise in this book, Gary. And there's nothing wrong with beating the IRS legally, but before we get into that, let's make it perfectly clear your position and so that nobody in our audience uh, believes these uh, fables to be true. The amendment, it's the 14th Amendment to the Constitution that allows him to take my money like he does, that was ratified, right? Okay, let's make sure that we are 100% on the same page. I am preaching to pay your taxes. All I'm saying to everybody is that you can do it differently. The Constitution states to all of us, We've got to file our tax return. Look at Wesley Snipes. He's an outstanding example, Gary, of someone everyone has heard of. The man never filed taxes, and he never paid the IRS because he somehow believed he had a constitutional right not to do it. Anyone that's ever challenged the IRS on this particular issue has not only lost, but they're doing time. So, again, we want to be honest on the tax return. We want to be able to substantiate every single line item that we have but the bigger issue is how in the world do we save money that is the key so uh the easiest way i guess is to make sure that we have our deductions right so that they're only taking x amount of money out of our uh out of our pay every year well let's talk about what people are doing wrong as you pointed out they're settling for the standard deduction on their short form. You mark that box, you do the dance one day a year, you get your refund check and you think the world is perfect. Why in the world are you ignoring the world of itemized deductions? Once you enter that wonderful world of itemized deductions, now you get to deduct things that you never had the opportunity to deduct. And you and I understand it. Simple math. The more you deduct, the less you pay to the IRS. It's wonderful, but we've got to change the way we approach taxes. By the way, I think I misspoke myself. I think I said the 14th Amendment it is the 16th Amendment. And the point is, ladies and gentlemen, you have to pay your taxes, but you don't have to overpay your taxes. Is that a good way of putting it? Exactly. You've got to pay your taxes, but why is it that we continue to overpay the IRS by $2,000. It comes back to the point you brought up, and it's really critical to understand the distinction. When you itemize your deductions, you're taking job hunting expense deductions, for example. You're claiming medical expense deductions, for example. You're doing things differently because you're now educated, and you're sick and tired of overpaying the IRS. That's all I'm saying, Gary. We've got to file. We've got to pay. But if we just learn a little bit about taxes, everyone out there would see financially 